examination of the abdomen. Today we will be looking at the principles of the abdominal examination in a surgical patient. The abdominal examination should ideally be done in good lighting and a warm private environment. The examiner should introduce himself to the patient cordially. We will ensure that the patient is comfortable, lying supine in bed and possibly with a pillow or two under his or her head. Expose the patient adequately from the nipple to the knee. It is customary to examine the groin area first, then cover for the remainder of the exam for patient privacy. We will restrict the examination to the abdomen today since there will be another video on examination of the groin. Remember that most patients find examination of the groin embarrassing, but good exposure is important to avoid missing important signs. You can get the patient to relax by breathing slow and regular. Examination of the abdomen must proceed in a systematic way. Inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. We need to remember that it is customary for the abdomen to be divided into nine regions. The right hypochondrium, left hypochondrium, epigastrium, right flank or lumbar region, umbilical region, left flank or lumbar region, right iliac fossa or inguinal region, left iliac fossa or inguinal region, and hypogastrium or suprapubic region. These are divided by the intersection of imaginary planes, two horizontal and two sagittal. The upper horizontal is the transpyloric plane. The lower horizontal passes through the upper borders of the iliac crest. The sagittal planes are identified by a line drawn vertically from the mid-inguinal point to the mid-clavicular point. Another way of dividing the abdomen is using a horizontal and a ver vertical line drawn through the umbilicus. These result in right and left, upper and lower quadrants. Inspection. Inspection of the abdomen is initially done from the foot of the bed. The examiner asks the patient to cough to, to demonstrate any hernia present. The examiner then goes to the right side of the patient and proceeds with the examination. On inspection of the abdomen, we take note of symmetry, shape, the presence of scars, skin lesions or stomas of the abdomen. Comments must be made on whether the abdomen is symmetrical and this is best assessed at the foot of the bed. The shape of the abdomen may be flat or scaphoid, also called inverted, such as in starvation or wasting diseases, or it may be protuberant or obese. Visible enlargement of any organ, such as the bladder or uterus arising from the pelvis or a solid organ, such as the liver, must be noted. The presence and site of a surgical scar, sinus, or fistula may indicate underlying pathology. We also take note of the distribution of hair pattern on an abdominal exam. Note must be made of skin lesions such as neurofibromas, striae, skin warts, etc. Distended veins must be noted. We take note of the movement of the abdomen during respiration. These may be decreased in peritonitis. Obvious pulsations must also be commented on. Hernia are usually examined with the abdomen. We will ask the patient to cough to demonstrate any umbilical or other hernia. Palpation. Position the patient's hands beside him alongside the body. Palpation should proceed with a warm, dry hand using the palmar surface of the whole hand. The examiner's hand and forearm must be horizontal in the same plane as the abdomen. This may be achieved by sitting or kneeling beside the patient. The examiner's hands must be clean and nails short. It is important to ask the patient if there is any tenderness in the abdomen and examine that area last on palpation. 
always observe the patient's face during examination for any grimace to indicate discomfort. Palpation is divided into light and deep. Light palpation. This should be done by lightly pressing on the abdomen. Palpation is normally done in a systematic fashion, moving from one quadrant or region to the next. Sites of tenderness are noted. Resistance due to increased muscle tone is reflected by guarding. This may be due to localized or generalized intra-abdominal disease. To elicit rebound tenderness, press the examining hand gently but firmly into the abdomen, then swiftly release the pressure. This may reveal deep-seated inflammation. Generalized board-like rigidity occurs in peritonitis and the abdominal movement is reduced to absent. Deep palpation. For deep palpation, palpate the abdomen more deeply with the flat of the hand. Again, examine each region in turn, staying remote from areas of tenderness until the end. Avoid using the fingertips. Enlarged organs or masses will be palpated on deep palpation. It is not unusual to palpate the lower edge of the liver, feces in the colon, especially in a slim individual. Palpation during inspiration. The liver, kidneys, and spleen should now be examined during deep inspiration. As the liver descends during inspiration by one to three centimeters, its edge may be palpated. Place the flat of the hand transversely on the abdomen. Press the hand firmly inwards and upwards and keep it steady when the patient takes a deep breath. At the height of inspiration, maintain the upward pressure. The radial side of the index finger should feel the liver edge. Note the nature of the liver edge, sharp, rounded, firm or irregular. Trace the edge of the liver across the abdomen. Gallbladder. Murphy's sign is elicited when inspiration is deeply arrested when the examining fingers near the gallbladder. The abdominal muscles tense and there is accentuation of pain. This is seen in cholecystitis or inflammatory processes of the gallbladder. The spleen. To examine the spleen, we begin by placing a hand to the right of and below the umbilicus. An enlarged spleen extends across the abdomen into the right iliac fossa. With deep inspiration, an enlarged spleen will touch the fingertips. If nothing is felt, proceed upwards. Remember that the spleen enlarges towards the right iliac fossa, so palpation may begin from the right iliac fossa towards the left costal margin. We can additionally ask the patient to roll towards the examiner and place the contralateral hand over the shoulder. The kidneys. We use a bimanual technique to palpate the kidneys. Place one hand posteriorly below the lower ribcage and the other over the upper quadrant. Push the hands firmly but gently together. Feel for the lower pole as the patient breathes deeply. Balotting the kidney is pushing the kidney between the two hands. Percussion. Percussion helps to distinguish between distension due to gas, ascites, cystic or solid tumors. Gaseous distension is resonant. A distended bladder is dull to percussion. Ascites is suggested by flank dullness and central resonance. We should percuss to determine the liver span. Commence by percussing from the right lower quadrant towards the area of dullness. Note this spot. Then percuss from the right chest wall down towards an area of dullness. Note this spot. The distance is the liver span. Let us now demonstrate shifting dullness. Shifting dullness. With the patient supine, percuss from the center of the abdomen to a dull note in the flank. Mark this spot with a finger as the patient rolls towards the examiner. Pause. 
for a few seconds and repeat the percussion in the same spot. A situs is suggested if the note now becomes resonant and there is dullness on percussing back towards the umbilicus. Fluid thrill. With the detecting hand on the contralateral flank, flick the skin of the abdomen on the other flank using the thumb and the index finger. If a thrill is felt, place the patient's hand in the center of the abdomen until along the midline sagittal plane to dampen any possible thrill transmitted via the abdominal wall. Auscultation. Auscultate for peristalsis, bowel sounds for at least one minute. Normal gut produces producing gurgling bowel sounds called borborygmy, which can be heard every five to 10 seconds. Listen over the aorta for bruise. To listen to su succussion splash, place the hands over the lower ribs and shake the patient quickly but rhythmically. This was not demonstrated. The digital rectal examination or DRE. The abdominal examination is complete with a digital rectal examination. The patient is positioned in the left lateral position with the buttocks at the end of the bed and the knees drawn up in a fetal position. The procedure must be explained to the patient. The lubricated gloved index finger is used. Part the buttocks and the perianal skin must be examined for skin lesions, hemorrhoids or fistulae. On the DRE, the entire rectum and prostate are examined. For the prostate, assess the size, the surface, consistency and tenderness. Feel for any masses. Ask the patient to squeeze the examining finger to assess the sphincter tone. Assess the glove for stool or the presence of blood. The patient must be cleaned at the end, wiping from front to back. At the end of the examination, the examiner covers the patient and thanks them for participating. We hope that this has been helpful.